to be in the same clothes. I'm not even gonna pretend like I didn't just finish the Divergent review. Cause if it took me that long to do the Divergent, if I did not hop into Insurgent, it probably never would have gotten done. Insurgent, let's go with it, by Veronica Roth. We have Triss and her gang of pals going towards Amity. Peter, Marcus, Triss and Four going to Amity, trying to seek sanctuary. They get there, uh, the leader is like, okay, yes, you can stay here, but there are rules. If you break these rules, you have to leave. What happens pretty soon after is that Peter steals the information. He steals the footage that if you didn't see Divergent, I will give this one to you, but I still say go watch it. Like subscribe, do all that fun stuff that I always forget to mention. So in Divergent, the faction that they are part of was raised up as an army to attack another faction. Triss and Four steal, they, they, they shut off the whole thing because it's just a simulation, it's a hallucination. And they steal the footage of it. They shut it off, they steal the footage, and they run for the hills. So now Peter it has stolen this. Okay, I'm right off the bat gonna go on a little tangent here. Did he just go to her room? Cause she hid it behind her dresser. Did he just go to her room and search everywhere he could? Or maybe this is just Triss's fault because she doesn't change the hiding spot every day. In any case, they get into a yelling match, they get into a physical altercation, and Triss is dragged off, and I'm thinking, okay, well this is a great start to the book. Because if you saw my review of Divergent, you know that I thought, particularly after reading this one, I thought Divergent was a bit tame. And so yeah, we hop into Insurgent, and we already have trouble. I'm thinking, all right, they're kicking her out, and now we're gonna figure out what's gonna happen. But what they do, so the thing is, Triss is not a very big person. Like she's short in stature. I think she's probably pretty tiny in terms of weight. And they inject her with something that is supposed to ease her personality, like dilute her feistiness. But they hadn't counted on the fact that she wasn't very big. So they gave her too much and now she's kind of loopy and four is like, what in the world happened to you? Eventually she comes down from this. Around this time, a little bit more background, there are quite a few factions. There's Dauntless, there's Abnegation, there's Erudite, there's Amity, and then there's Candor. She was born in Abnegation, which basically they're peaceful people. She tests as divergent, which means that she tested as being able to fit into more than one faction. She chooses Dauntless. Dauntless are the brave. At the end of Divergent, as I had said, the Dauntless had been raised into an army, blah, 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 off the simulation, and now it's like, what's going on? We have now two factions within the Dauntless faction. We have kind of the, the innocent Dauntless who had no clue what was going on. They had been the ones under the simulation, although maybe some of them chose to go with the Dauntless traitors. And so what is now happening is the Dauntless traitors, the ones who had been in on the plan, who were not under any sort of simulation, they come to Amity searching for divergence. Or yes, divergence as in divergent plural, not divergence as in D-I-V-E-R-G-E-N-C-E. -E -E. Can we please say how impressive that is for 1230 at night? Yes, and so Triss and her group get out of Dodge and they end up meeting Four's long lost mother who says, look, Four, I'm factionless. And what I want you to do is become factionless too. I want you to convince people to side with the factionless because we are going to rise up against the erudite and we're going to destroy them. And the erudite is the group, the, the intelligent group led by the main antagonist, Janine. We haven't gotten a whole lot of her. I was like, no, but as I said, this was a much more exciting book, but a lot happens. And even at the best of times, I was really confused about what was going on because honestly, as soon as one event ended, a brand new one would come up and I was like, 
whoa, okay, like, do you people never sleep? They're on the train, they run into his mother, they may or may not go to factionless headquarters, I don't quite remember, but they end up at Candor headquarters. And Candor, they inject serum into Four and Triss because they have been accused by the Dauntless of basically being enemies and doing bad things. And so Candor, who are all about truth, are like, we need the truth from you before we let you stay here. They admit all these truths. Again, I don't remember why this happened. I think they're seeking out the Dauntless traitors. They go to this building with a bunch of other Candor, I think. And the, the Dauntless traitors show up. And they inject everybody with, or maybe they gas everybody. In any case, only the Divergent would be immune to this knockout gas. Dauntless traders are, for some reason, looking for the Divergent. We still don't know. That was my problem with Divergent. I, I never quite understood why the Divergent were important. We do learn a bit more in this book, but at this juncture, we do not. Triss because she was not affected, is now trying to go around finding the Divergent before the Dauntless traders can. She runs into Eric, who I feel like you guys don't even have to go watch my Divergent review now. Eric is one of the Dauntless trader leaders. He is kind of uh, the biggest rival, foe, whatever, to four, he is in charge of this mission of finding the Divergent. She is able to severely wound him. They go back to Candor. The Candor leader is approached by Janine, is challenged by Janine, and she's like, you need to meet me here, that we're gonna have this conversation. Triss and her gang listen in on it, things happen. They come back to the Candor headquarters, and the Dauntless are like, you know what? We are not ruled by the candor. Yes, they are letting us stay here, but we need to take care of our own business. And they decide to execute Eric for no problem. He does it. He executes Eric. Dauntless then decide, you know what? We are not going to stay with the candor. This is not our place. We're going to go back to our own headquarters to make sure that Janine can no longer put us in a simulation can no longer control us. We're gonna dismantle all of the cameras, all the security cameras. They miss one. When in Divergent, one of Triss's best friends was a girl named Christine, Christina. And then Christina had, by the end of that book, become romantically linked to another one of their friends, Will. Triss had to kill Will at the end of Divergent and then when they get to Candor and they're, and then she and Four are asked all these questions, she is actually able, because they're put under a truth serum, her divergence is unique or strong or whatever enough that she is able to get around that serum. And she has the choice of admitting what she did or lying about it. She admits it. So now she and Christina there's tension there, right? Because they were best friends. But now Christine learns that not only did Triss kill Will, she lied about it in a sense. You'd have to read the book to know what I mean. But Christina wakes Triss up in the middle of the night and she's like, look, there's these three people, they're up on the roof, they're gonna jump off, I need your help. I'm going to take a little detour here and say, why did she not wake up a third person? Because we're going to get into a little bit of spoiler. One of them was a kid. One of them was another friend that Triss has made. And then the third was the sibling of a friend of hers who's already had tragedy in their life. And so the thing is now Christina and Triss have to figure out who are they going to save? Because there's only two of them and for some reason they can only stop two. There's no way they can grab the third person. They end up uh, letting a girl named Marlene die. So they save the kid. They save the girl who's already had tragedy in her life, but they let Marlene die. This is important because Janine sends notice and she's like, look, you send us a, a divergent. We will stop these attacks on the helpless. Tris 
sacrifices herself. She is basically tested on by Janine. Four tries to come and save her. Uh, it doesn't work, he gets captured. But he's still able to convince some dauntless traitors or whoever. He, he convinces people to join their side, to fight against the, the erudite. And Janine, upon realizing that none of her serums, none of her experiments are going to work on Triss, says, kill her. Spoiler, Peter intervenes. Peter saves her life. He also rescues four. They escape. They go back to a safe house or something. They encounter Marcus. And Marcus reveals that what Janine wants from abnegation is the secret. But the thing is, like, things would be ruined if this secret got out. I don't really know why she wants the secret. I don't know. Like, one thing about Janine is, for me, she went from being a villain to almost being a villain that's misunderstood. If you've ever read Wicked, Wicked is the story of the Wicked Witch of the West. And how she's not really wicked, she's just misunderstood. Janine goes from being wicked or evil to being someone who just wants the truth to get out. However, I still, I still can't remember the third book's name. Maybe it's revealed there. We get more character development of, of Janine. I, I, I don't really know what her obsession with the Divergent is. I don't really know why she wants this information. Maybe it will enable her to have total control. The insurgents, they invade Erudite. They win, but not before Triss makes it to Janine, or maybe it's after, it doesn't really matter. Triss is in the midst of all this. Of course, she has told for, oh no, I'm not gonna get involved, I'm gonna just stay where I am. That goes back to something completely different. She gets through all of the obstacles, all of the hurdles. She gets to Janine only to find somebody else has made it there first. She's a very minor character. I thought we'd get more of her. Maybe we do, but by this book we haven't. But this character, Tori, is the one who did the test on Triss in the first book that revealed Triss's divergence. There were a couple of crumbs that, you know, if you put things together, you understand why she ends up with Janine. But she is essentially upset with Janine because her brother had been divergent and Janine got rid of him. She killed him, so she wants to kill Janine. Triss is telling her, don't do it. We need her to get the information. It doesn't work. Tori kills Janine. And then she labels Triss a traitor for not wanting to kill Janine. That's kind of where we end this book where, I mean, also it's that the, the big secret, which huge spoiler and my feeling on it is like it was a bit anticlimactic because I could have guessed this. Like this, this secret is nothing new and maybe it's nothing new because of the time period in which this Divergent trilogy came out that this was sort of what was going on in post-apocalyptic literature. It is and you know it's a video recording done by Triss's mother way back like before Triss, Triss was born 20-30 years. She reveals that the world had become corrupt. And so what was decided was to seal off basically the city of Chicago and then to divide the people into factions. And I think the people were given some kind of serum things to forget. I'm not quite sure how this all works. I probably would know if I were doing this review closer to when I'd actually read the book. The whole idea was let's seal off this area, put people into factions so that they can become a better kind of people. And then once there are enough divergence or there's enough of the divergent, open up the gates, let them back into society and they can help change the world. I still don't understand how they, I mean, I guess it's because each faction centered around a certain personality trait. If you adhere to kind of one way of thinking, you're going to be a bit more pure-minded, pure-hearted. 
but we can't all just have one way of thinking and that's where the divergent come in because they're able to see outside of that they're able to i guess have more empathy i don't i don't know in any case yeah so that was the whole deal was this divergent world like being divergent wasn't actually bad being divergent was good and by this point the divergent population outnumbered all the other factions so it was about time to open the doors anyways at that point when I learned the big secret I was just like I could have guessed that a corrupt society and then we have a faction of people that get split from this society for some reason and now they're gonna cure everybody like it just I thought it was going to be a bigger deal, a bigger surprise. Uh, you know, I thought there was going to be more at stake and there wasn't like, which is why I don't understand why Janine wanted this information. Like how was she going to use it? Maybe you guys can tell me how did you feel about this big reveal? I, I did think it was interesting that it was Triss's mother. And so, you know, we get a lot of her parents in this book and we get a lot of characterization of her parents. Because in the first book, they're the perfect abnegation. You know, they're very submissive, they're calm, like they, they, they do what they're supposed to do, they're fair. And then obviously we learn that they had past. We learn that the mother was dauntless. We learn that the father, I think he was erudite and that he used to be friends with Janine. So we're like, hmm, there's a bit more layering to these people than we thought. And then we learn that her name is Edith. Uh, Trisha's mother's name is Edith. That like this whole society, this divergent, you know, faction, factionless society is not that old. I'm thinking it's centuries old. Like this is how long it has taken to develop a better race of people. But it's only two generations worth of people. Her parents were scientists involved in the very beginning because her mother's real name was Amanda. So she comes into this new factioned society I guess her memory has been erased and whatever, whatever, whatever. But I was just like, I mean, that was surprising to me that this world that she was part of was actually really new. I actually didn't write much for Insurgent. It stops here. You can't really see. I honestly really couldn't think of much to talk about. But I will talk about Triss and Four. I liked them in Divergent. I thought they were a really enjoyable couple. In this, not so much. And I think it was because there was so much back and forth. I did not expect their relationship to be perfect. Perfect is boring. But I got really tired because Triss, she lied a lot. She, she would put herself in danger but then she would lie to him about what she was doing. And then he, you know, another situation would come up and she would lie again about what she was going to get involved with. And obviously he's concerned about her. And then he's upset that she lied to him. And he's like, how can I be in a relationship with someone that I don't even trust, that I don't understand, that I don't know? Instead of there being good tension, I thought it was a bit messy. I got really tired of her saying one thing and doing another and then him just accepting it and then we started all over. I, I didn't really like the fact that they stayed together. I, I thought it would have been more interesting if they broken up because then we have that awkwardness in whatever's going to happen in the third book because we want them to be together. But they don't work well together when put in real world situations. So how is that going to work out in the third book? I, I did not enjoy their dynamic whatsoever. I felt like they didn't have any chemistry in this book. 
on top of all of their marital issues. I'm glad that they finally told us what Divergent was and that Divergent wasn't bad. It was actually what they were aiming for in their society. Although I still had so many questions about how do you become Divergent, especially if this is only the second generation. How did it mutate from whatever they were programmed into being into already being divergent. What was it about certain people that they were divergent? Like, oh, oh, I forgot the biggest spoiler of all in Insurgent. And this I did not see coming. Triss's brother Caleb was a double agent. At some point, he joins forces with Triss and her gang. He'd been erudite, and so what he'd done is he was like, it, it wasn't what I was expecting expecting complete and total lie he was really just a secret agent a traitor spying on Triss for Janine and so this is how they always kind of had the upper hand this is always how they sort of knew what was going on was because he was reporting back to them and I was just like I think I loved it so much because it's the ultimate betrayal this is her brother this is her blood so how in the world could he do something like that to her? Especially because that's not the kind of character he's portrayed to be. He's really cool headed. He is rational. You know, he seems to see things the way that they're supposed to be seen. And then, and then I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. But that goes back to obviously Triss was divergent and Caleb wasn't. So what was it about even siblings that one could turn out to be divergent and the other couldn't. Peter, kind of similar to, to Caleb. So there's so much tension still. Triss never completely trusts him. She always thinks he's out for number one, which he is. But I liked how, and, and this, this could have gone badly. I could have reacted to this the way that I reacted to the back and forth with Triss and Ford's relationship. But I liked how you never really knew what Peter was up to. You never really knew, has he become a better person? Or is he just being manipulative? I cannot tell you why he chose to do what he did. If I reread the book, I probably could because I think it's answered. If you know the answer, please let me know. But yeah, I can't tell you why he rescued Triss and it puts me in his corner. It makes me like him. I mean, I already liked his villainness, and now I'm liking his good guyness because it just adds a layer to him. It makes me question him a little bit more. It makes me want to know him a little bit more because he's not flat. <sighs> okay. Uh, last good thing that I liked was the fact that Triss admitted to killing Will. Because it's one of those really hard situations that we want her to keep it to herself because she can. But the fact that she doesn't says a ton about who she is as a character and that connects me almost boring or or vanilla as she seems to be at times she's a bit of a daredevil what you see in Allegiant is Triss has embraced this dauntless side where she's almost not afraid of anything the only thing that changes in her is once she kills Will, she cannot handle a gun. It's like severe PTSD. She cannot handle a gun. But she's willing to look death in the face at every turn. Her, her revealing that she killed Will, there's a lot of repercussion that comes with that. Like, have you ever admitted something really hard? Something that's going to devastate your personal life? Like, Christina was one of her best friends so what's gonna happen even though the will christina relationship was really young it had just happened when everything takes place at the end of divergence or diverger 
divergent. But you know what? If anybody's gonna kill the guy you like or the girl you like, you're probably gonna harbor ill will towards them no matter how long you guys have been in a relationship. So, but I, I just thought it, it showed a lot of character for Tris to say, look, I didn't have to reveal this, but I am. And now how are we gonna move past it? This is something that's on my con list, but it's not really a con, but I liked that I began to question Janine. I liked that I began to question her motives. I've addressed this before. People are not all good and all bad. So you can't have a villain that's just bad for no reason, except for the fact that you need a villain. So here, I like that I'm wondering, why is Janine the villain? Why is she the antagonist? What are her motives? Is it because she thinks people need to know the truth? Is it because she wants to start World War III? Like she wants to raise her dauntless army and then go out into the world and you know, she wants everybody to know about it so they'll be part of her dauntless army? Like, I don't know, but I, I, I liked how in this book I began to question how much do I hate Janine? That's it. That's it for Allegiant. This one was even shorter than Divergent. Wow. What did you think? Did you have a favorite of these books? What do you think of the next one? Which I still can't remember the name of it. It starts with an R. Where there's an R in it. There's something. My, my poor brain needs to go to bed.